All right, so in this next video, we're going to discuss intrusive features. So these are features where the magma never actually reached the surface. It ended up cooling beneath the surface in a variety uh, of different ways and shapes. So in all of these, for intrusive igneous rocks, they're all going to be coarse-grained because they cooled inside the earth because they were insulated by the surrounding rocks. So we'll go through all of these. You can see in this diagram, some of them are pretty large. In the case of Batholith, they're huge. And then some of them are pretty small, uh, like the little red stripes you see, those would be dikes and sills. So we'll go through each of these here in order. So the first type, which would be stocks, uh, those are a small portion of an underlying batholith that extends upwards uh, to the surface from that batholith. So you can see in this image, stocks are only a few kilometers across, whereas batholiths are tens of kilometers across. Uh, the next would be what's called a neck, and this is the leftover plumbing system of a volcano. So we've got, uh, say, uh, your vent and the pathway for that, that magma to reach the surface. Um, in these cases, that has solidified, it's cooled to a solid, the volcano has gone extinct, and we're left behind with that internal plumbing system. The rest erodes away because the rest of these volcanoes are, are much easier to erode. So they'll have layers of tuff, layers of, of lava flows intermingled throughout, uh, making it much, much easier for erosion to happen. Whereas that center core is uh, cooled intrusively, the crystals are interlocked together, there's no layers in there to break apart, so uh, it sticks around uh, pretty easily. So we have two examples here, one in eastern Oregon on the top, and the bottom is Devil's Tower, um, which is a pretty cool place to go visit. There's lots of other examples that you're going to check out in uh, your homework activity this week. Cryptodomes, these are, are kind of tricky, um, difficult to actually um, pinpoint. In these cases, lava has not yet breached the surface, um, so it results in a large bulge on the side of a volcano. Uh, Mount St. Helens showed uh, signs of this before it erupted. However, um, that uh, rising magma never actually cooled underneath that volcano. It, it actually erupted. So in that case there, a uh, cryptodome started to form, but uh, was then uh, destroyed by that in, uh, eruption that occurred. The next would be sills. So this is an intrusion that actually follows any layering you might have. So typically sedimentary rocks that form in horizontal layers. So we see we have a couple of these. We have two different types of, of uh, sills. So one sill has uh, 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 follows the rock units and we see it um, just filling in the space between or, or, or melting into that rock. We have what's called a lacolith where instead of uh, uh, it melting its way through and filling any void space, it actually forces the rocks upward. And then the, another one that is not actually pictured here is what's called a lopolith. And this is where that that uh, curved shape that we see in the lacolith for a lopolith with a P, L-O-P, uh, that uh, curved surface would go downwards. And then uh, so that intrusion would have hit one of these layers that was hard to force up and would just melt into the rocks below. And then the next that we're going to see are what are called dikes. And dikes are pretty small scale. Um, I've seen ones that are only, like this picture, a few centimeters across. They can be several feet across. These just cut any which way across the uh, any rocks that may uh, exist. Pluton, so Pluton um, are tens of kilometers in size. They probably represent a single magma chamber. So in this picture here, we're on the coast of Maine. And if uh, you didn't know, the coast of Maine and the east coast of the U.S. is actually a convergent boundary at one point where two plates collided. And when that happened, we had volcanoes. Um, since then, things have pulled apart. Erosion has removed a lot of those top layers, any of those familiar volcano shapes that, that you would associate with volcanic activity. And what we're left with is this rolling topography uh, as a result of glaciation. And we're seeing a slice uh, into that magma chamber. So here we see actually this island, this is Mount Desert Island, 
is actually one entire magma chamber uh, where we see, uh, in this case, it's uh, a granite that we see. We actually, uh, when you hike around there, you can see the edges of that magma chamber where parts of the surrounding rock were being melted into uh, the center of that magma chamber. So plutons are will probably represent a single magma chamber, whereas batholiths are huge, several overlapping magma chambers to form one large one. So here we have a couple examples. You can see the Idaho batholith in Idaho and the Sierra Nevada batholith down here in California. Much of the Sierra Nevada mountains um, are made of this batholith. And in some cases, we see parts that might not necessarily be connected uh, right now. However, if you were to um, maybe erode further into the rock or see what was eroded away before, a lot of these would have been connected at the same rock type. So these are hundreds of kilometers in size um, with overlapping plutons. Uh, some of them are pretty similar in chemistry. The uh, uh, Yosemite National Park is a great example uh, where you can actually see these rocks uh, up close and personal. So those are our major intrusive features. We have stocks, necks, cryptodomes, sills, dikes, plutons, and batholiths. You'll uh, check out some of these in your homework this week.